Is it afternoon? Yes. Good morning, everyone. My name is uh, Nos Ahibio Lukemi Florence. I am the one anchoring the program Hello. this morning. Hello, can you hear me? Good morning, ma. I can yeah. hear you. Okay. So I am the one anchoring the yes, uh, program. Yes, ma. We can hear you. Okay, thank you. And the topic of discussion today is um, labor. We are talking about labor. Uh, labor is a series of contractions, continuous contra uh, progressive uterine contraction that help the cervix to dilate and efface. I mean, labor is a series of continuous progressive uterine contractions that help the cervix to dilate, which means open, and a face, which means to thin out. And uh, there are different um, signs of uh, various signs of a uh, labor. What are the signs of labor? Number one, we have um, abdominal cramps. Some women feel the type of cramps that usually occur during menstruation as their own uh, sign of a uh, labor. These cramps are usually different from uh, that of a uh, Braxton Hicks. What do I mean by Braxton Hicks? Braxton, Braxton Hicks are usually painless, false contractions that happens when the uterus tightens. So some women usually experience cramps as sign of a labor. Then the second sign is pelvic pressure. What do I mean by pelvic pressure? When a woman is nearing when she will fall into labor, she may start feeling pressure in her vagina or um, the pelvis. This occurs due to lightning. What I mean by lightning is that the abdomen, the baby drops down from the abdomen into the pelvis. So for that, the weight of the baby applies pressure in the pelvic area, which uh, the mother now feels. Some women may not experience uh, this pelvic pressure, while some may experience it shortly before the actual labor starts or during the actual labor. Another sign of labor is loss of the mucus uh, plug. The mucus plug is a kind of opaculum that blocks the, or covers the entrance into the uterus. Its function there is to prevent bacteria from going in to meet the baby. Is a kind of a, a preventive measure which nature has provided to prevent the child or the baby in there from being infected. So some women experience a fall, a fall off of that um, mucus plug. It comes off as a kind of mucoid, uh, mu uh, bloody mucoid, mucoid stain. While in uh, the actual sense, as previously uh, thought, that whenever the mucus is um, uh, released or falls off like that, the woman is expected to fall into labor at a certain uh, number, of, within a certain number of days. But these days, it is observed that women can um, lose their um, muc uh, mu uh, mucus flow without falling into labor 
immediately because the Mokos club can reaccumulate after a while. If the team can reaccumulate and then remains there to protect the baby still. Another change or uh, another uh, sign of labor is changes in the vaginal discharge. Even with the uh, mucus there, that is the, the, the mucus plug in, in situ or in, 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 in tax, you may, pardon, are you hearing me? You may, let me continue, you may uh, notice other changes to your vaginal discharge. It can come in form of watery discharge, sticky discharge, or it may even be thicker. Sometimes it may be a little uh, pink before labor begins or at the early stage of labor. Other signs of labor are contractions and tightening of the abdominal uh, wall. You begin to have um, contractions and tightness of your abdominal wall. Another one is back ache or lower abdominal uh, ache, which uh, most women describe as a, a low, weight, low, low waist pain or a low back pain. Then for some women, they may have the urge to go to toilets, which is caused by the pressure of the baby's head on the boil. Then um, the last but not the least sign of labor is um, when the water, your water breaks. At that point, you are advised to start running to the hospital. So those are the uh, signs of a uh, label. We have um, four stages of label. That brings us to stages of labor. There are four stages of labor. The four, the, during the first stage of labor, contractions help your your cervix to thin and begin to open. This is called effacement and uh, dilatation. As your cervix dilates, the nurse or the doctor taking care of you measures the opening, which is usually in centimeter. Half an inch equals to one centimeter. And uh, during the first stage, the cervix widens to about 10 centimeter. This first stage lasts for about uh, 12 to 13 hours in first timers, women having their first baby. Then subsequent uh, uh, labor, it lasts for about nine to eight hours subsequently. And the first stage, hello? Are you hearing me? Hello? Yes, we are hearing okay. Yes, we can hear you. Okay, thank you. This, the first stage is divided into three uh, parts which are the early labor, the active labor, and then the transitional stage of labor. The early labor, in the early labor, your cervix opens to four cm. During this period, you are expected to relax, rest, drink less fluids, 
eat light food, at light meals, ensure that you relax very well. If you want to, you may want to, sorry. And then you can change your activity from time to time. This will help you to uh, the contractions to reduce for some time. But over time, this contraction gets stronger from time to time. What I mean is that in first stage, the first stage of the, for the first part of the first stage of labor, in the early uh, labor, your service opens to about four cm. It is during this period you have time to maybe carry out your little little house chores, and then you should, in this time, find time to rest, conserve your energy, take clear fluids, and then you may even take a light diet. The contraction may wear off after a while, but with change in activity, maybe initially you were active doing things, the contraction kept on coming. But if you decide to relax, the uh, contraction may subside. But over time, it, continue, it will continue to increase until you can no longer bear the pain. Then that brings us to Active labor. Active labor in during this uh, period, your cervix opens from 4 cm to 7 cm. This is when the contraction comes every three to four um, minutes, and they last like the contraction lasts like about 60 seconds. And um, during this time, the opening of the cervix becomes faster. I mean, the dilatation becomes faster. It means that every, at every one hour, your cervix opens one cm for every one hour. And as labor progresses, the water, your water bag may break on its own. You are expected, and uh, after the water bag has broken, contractions are expected to speed up. They will now increase. And then uh, you are expected to take slow, easy breath from time to time. This usually help you to conserve energy, helps you as well to relax. And it is this period that changing of uh, position is helpful. You change your position from time to time, at least to make you more relaxed. Massaging your back, Hot or cold compress may also help you to feel better. And then you are also expected to relax in between contractions to help you save your energy and helps in the, the service to open as well. That is for the active uh, phase of labor. Then the transitional uh, so second stage is when your cervix is 10, a 7 to 10 cm dilated. When I mean dilated, I mean the opening. For most women, this is the hardest part and the most painful part of uh, the labor process. This is when the contractions become more, painful, more painful. And at this time, many women 
gets irritated, they feel somehow frustrated and may not want anybody to touch them. You may feel sweaty and sick in the stomach, shaky, hot or cold at this period. And this is when your um, cervix will dilate up to 10 cm. The contractions at this period are more frequent. They come every two to three minutes and then may last 60 to 90 seconds during this period. Then that ends the first stage. I told you first stage, you have early first stage, the early first stage, and then we have the active uh, labor, then the transitional, transition to second stage. Then, the second stage proper. The second stage is a period where your cervix is fully dilated to when you give birth to, the baby, to your baby. From full dilatation to when the baby is delivered. That is the second stage of labor. And it ends with the delivery of the baby. Contraction at this period are very intense. They are stronger and then they tend to, they, they are similar to the urge that you have when you want to move a boil. That is how the contractions of the second stage of labor is. This is when we move you to the labor, uh, labor room, uh, that is the labor bed, the delivery bed proper. This is when the nurse, after all the doctor, after checking you, will now tell you, okay, madam, if you have the urge to push, you can push. This is when your baby is uh, delivered. The contraction continues to become strong, but they may spread out, giving you little uh, uh, period of time to rest. The second stage depends on whether you have given birth. The length of the second stage depends on whether you have given birth before or not. And it also depends on the number of babies you have given birth to. What I mean by that is that if you are a first timer, it will take you longer to uh, give birth in the uh, second stage. While for the first time, uh, for the uh, maybe a woman that has delivered more than uh, two babies or about to deliver her second and the baby, it may be faster for such women. And the number of babies that you have delivered to matters because at that time, if you have been, if you have given birth to maybe two or three babies, you are used to the rules on the bed, on the, on the uh, delivery bed. If you are asked to push, you will know how to push. For a first time, they may not even know how to push because many don't even uh, attend this type of meeting. Some don't even attend when we were having the real physical class. They don't come. It is only on the delivery day that you, you will see them in the hospital. And then when you start telling them, do like this, do like that, they may not uh, be able to do it properly because as at that point in time, they are in pain and then they cannot comprehend very well what the nurse or the doctor is saying. And apart from that, nature has made it also that it will be easier for uh, somebody that has delivered, a woman that has delivered before than the one that has not delivered before. Then this third stage 
is the period whereby is the period after the birth of the baby and then the delivery of the placenta. At this time, the uterus continues to continues to contract. This is to push out the placenta. And it usually lasts between five minutes to 15 minutes. It doesn't take time. Once the baby is born, the placenta follows shortly after. Between five to 15 minutes, the placenta is uh, delivered if all things be equal, if there is no problem. Well, that also brings us to exercises during uh, uh, labor. There are some exercises that a woman in labor is expected to uh, engage in. These exercises helps you to kind of control the pain and also help you to relax. When you are in the labor world, the nurse will tell you when you are having a contraction that you should take short, deep breath with your mouth. And then you exhale with your mouth too. This helps you to relax and also it helps you to relieve uh, pain. Not only that, it helps you to regain some strength. If you follow it the way you are taught by the nurse, you will discover that it, it uh, is always, it will be helpful to you when you are in labor. And then the last um, topic of discussion is episiotomy. Episiotomy is an incision created on the vaginal wall by the nurse or the doctor conducting the delivery process to enlarge the opening. So as, hello? No. To, to enlarge the opening for the baby to be able to come out easily. I was like, is this on here? I was like, wait, let me not jump off it. <laughs> After no, the, the um, episiotomy is done, I mean, I said, I said, so after the episiotomy is done, when the baby and the uh, placenta is delivered, then the episiotomy is sutured which brings us to the final uh, stage of a uh, delivery, which is the fourth stage. After the episiotomy is sutured, everything has been done for the woman. At this time, both the mother and the father, they are joyous, they are happy, they've seen their baby. The mother will want to hold the baby and then it is advised that the mother should breastfeed the baby even on the delivery uh, couch there. This will help the uterus to contract and then help to, this helps to um, reduce the bleeding. When the uterus is well contracted, the woman will not have uh, what is known as a PP, postpartum hemorrhage, that is bleeding after delivery. When the baby is suckled on the breast at the point of delivery, it helps to contract the uterus. 
this is helpful in the control of bleeding. So that period whereby we are helping to control the bleeding, the baby is breastfeeding and so on and so on, the mother is breastfeeding. That is what is termed as the fourth stage of labor. And during this period, after the woman might have finished, we might have finished with the woman in the labor ward, we move her to the next room for her to rest for like one hour, after which she can be moved to the ward for, for, for onward day care. That brings me to the end of the uh, discussion session. If there is any question, you can signify so that uh, you can ask us questions. Hello? Hello? Yeah. Okay. Hello, guys. We can Hello. hear you. Yeah. I said that brings me to the end of the um, discussion. If anyone has any question, you can ask me. If there is any question. I have a question. Thank you, Ma, for the class. <laughs> Hello, can you hear me, Ma? Yes, I can hear you. Okay, the episiotomy, is it compulsory that it must be done? No, ma, it is not compulsory, but if it is necessary, it will be done. Okay. It is not all women. We don't, we don't give uh, episiotomy to all women. It is meant for some. Okay, so... Um, Okay, thank you, ma. Yes, ma. You're welcome. Any other person? No. 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 And from uh, on the screen, I could see uh, a question there stating that whether is it all women that we have uh, labor signs? Yes, it is all women that will have labor signs. The intensity is what differs. The, some, some women or some people don't feel pain, much pain. While some, they feel uh, intense pain. Our level of pain threshold differs. For people who don't experience uh, pain, they will still have signs that will make them know that ah, this is labor. So, like as I told you, I said initially that one of the signs of labor, the woman feels cramps, as if uh, like that that uh, is being experienced when one is in, uh, is uh, undergoing a menstrual period. So. Such could be the lot of that kind of person. So the intensity of pain differs. So there must be sign that labor is taking place. Also, I also told you that the, for some people, the water will break. It is not necessary that you have all the signs, but you must have some of the signs. Hello. Hello, have I answered the person? We answer you. We answer. It's not me. No, there is somebody that wrote something concerning uh, whether is it all, all women that suffer labor pains. So that is what I just answered. Seven weeks. Okay, I'm listening. Yes, thank you, Ma. You've answered the question. Thank you, Ma. Okay, okay Ma. <laughs> Any other person? Hello. Hello, Ma. Yes, Ma. There are a lot of questions on the chat. There are a lot of questions on the chat. I'm opening them up. 
I can't see the questions. Just ask me. Okay, ma. Please, ma. What causes um inducing during labor? Why is there need for the inducing? They give women this injection thing. I don't know the name. Inducing. But what causes it? We don't give injections to induce labor, but uh, induction of labor is a process. Okay. Before you can induce a woman, then it means the woman has gone past the normal uh, duration for pregnancy. Normally, uh, labor starts from uh, 37 to 40 weeks. But when an individual is gone past 42 weeks, are you getting me? Such woman, will be induced because at that time, the placenta is no more feeding the baby and the baby has to come out to survive. Do you get? Yes, ma'am, yes, ma'am. Okay, that is why we induce. We don't just go ahead and induce women. There must be a reason for induction, which is postdatism. The person has gone beyond the normal duration of a pregnancy before we can induce. Okay, ma. Thank you, ma. You're welcome. Hello. Hello. Um, good afternoon. Good afternoon, ma. I'm hearing you. Yes, I'm um, 37 weeks gone. Okay. And then uh, I'm yet to see any, I'm yet to lose my mucus plug. So I want to ask if it is a must to lose it or does it come at any not, given point of time? It is, not a, it is not a must, okay? Okay. Like when okay. I was uh, discussing about, uh, saying something about the uh, mucus plug, I said it can come off. Okay. And at times, even when it comes off, it does not mean that labor is about to start because okay. it can reaccumulate. Okay. The mucus plug is just there to protect your baby inside, it prevents. Okay. Uh, bacteria so from the outside going in to meet the baby. Okay. It is not mandatory, but for some people, it will come off before labor. Why? For others, it will happen while they are in labor. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. You're welcome. Any other person? Hello. 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 Any more question? Mm -hmm. Hello. I'm hearing a voice at the background. Are you asking me a Hello? question? Or... Hello? Hello, ma. Yes, ma. Good afternoon, ma. I'll be good morning, ma. Yeah, yeah, good morning, ma. For yeah. a first time, ma. For a first time, ma. Yes, ma. How long can labor take yes. for a first time? How long can labor be for a first time? I don't I am not a wicked person. Okay, ma. I am not a person. I am not a wicked person. I am not
Any more question? Good afternoon, ma'am. Sorry, madam, I didn't get your answer to that first question about how long um, labor will take for a first timer. I said 12 to 13 hours, ma'am. Okay. Good afternoon, ma'am. Good afternoon, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. I'm 40 weeks and five days gone now. Okay. And I've been having cramps for a little over a week now, but it will come and it will go after a while as I won't feel any pain again. The cramps are like menstrual cramps, like you said. Okay. So last week when I went for my routine checkup, the doctor said that he wants to give me another one week before okay. he induces me. So, so yeah. my question now is those cramps that I'm, I'm feeling, those cramps I've been feeling, is yes. there any cause for alarm? Because sometimes it gets intense, then after a while, to just stop on its own. Anyway, there is no cause for alarm, but um, the issue is that you are already tame. You are you are already tame. So yeah. the baby is trying to find it, its way out. That is why you are having the cramps. And it is expected uh, for the cramps to, in, to increase, do you understand, in intensity, as well as frequency. That is why the doctor that saw you gave you another one week so that it will not be as if we are too, uh, we are too much in our haste because we don't just induce people like that, uh, induce pregnant women like that. We allow them, if they have exhausted the time frame, then when you come next time, when, when next you come to the hospital now, the doctor will know uh, from which angle to solve the situation, okay? okay? He will know what to do. He will know what best to do. But for now, just keep watch. Okay. All right. Thank you, ma'am. When you discover that the, the, the pains, the cramps, they are getting intense, they are getting worse, and they are coming more frequently, don't hesitate to come to the hospital. Don't right. wait don't wait until uh, for you to get to that one week that you are given. But if there's anything that comes up before that one week elapses, you should come to the hospital. Okay, thank you very much. You're welcome. Hello, ma. Yes, ma. Good, Good afternoon. afternoon, ma. Yes. Ma. Thank you for your lectures. Though I did not join the class on time. Okay. So I want to know at what point should a woman who is in labor for a first time mother come to the hospital? Okay. Initially, it will start with cramps. Okay. You feel as if um, uh, it is a menstrual pain that you are having. But when you notice that the pains, the cramps kept on coming frequently and then it is increasing, the pain, it, 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 it now becomes painful. Don't hesitate to come to the hospital. Pack your bag. You know, the moment you are 30, let's say 36 weeks gone, you are expected to pack your things ready so that because labor can start any moment from 30, uh, between 30, from 37 weeks. You know, a day after 36 weeks, you can fall into labor and then you should get your property and your things and you start coming to the hospital. Have I answered you? Okay. Yes, ma'am. Thank you very much. Okay. Any other question? Hello, house. My own question, Ma, is um that there's this thing I hear as a first time mom that um when you are in labor or you see signs of labor. You can take certain fruits like pineapple to assist and all that. How true is that, ma? Well, it has not been proven scientifically. And once anything is not proven scientifically, I don't subscribe to it. Okay, I'm just been hearing it for the very first time. <laughs> okay, ma. Any other person? Yeah, that's
Hello, house. Hello. Yes, ma. Good afternoon, okay. ma. Good afternoon, ma. Yes, ma. Okay, my question is like when you were explaining, you said that there is a physical class for teaching how maybe how to push. I don't know, like when when I did it, not say a physical. Uh, I mean, when you come for the physical class, so you understand. They will just demonstrate it for you. Like as I think you are looking at me right now, right? The because... not... Hello, you are looking at me right now, right? It is a way of telling you that when you if you are there, it will be explained vividly, clearly to you how to push by um describing or maybe at times demonstrating it for you. That is what I meant. So does this mean when we come to visit our doctors, I don't know when this can be demonstrated. Like currently now, I don't think there's any demonstration class right now, aside from these um, Zoom classes. It is because of the COVID. You know, even when there was a class, when we used to have classes, some people still don't come to uh, for, for the class. Some people still don't come. That is what I meant. Even some that are there, you see some people pressing their phones. Although I, I have not actually attended that of this place, but in, mo in most cases, the ones that I've attended in my former place, you will see some women, instead of them to focus on what they are being taught, they will have some side, they will be having some side talks. Okay, so um, well, I don't know if it's possible for us to have a Zoom class where uh, it can be demonstrated to us. Since uh, because of COVID, we can't have physical classes. For anyway, when you come during your continental class, uh, during your um, ANC visit, you can ask so that it will be explained to you in vivid terms. Okay, ma. All right, thank you. You're welcome. Good afternoon, ma. Good afternoon, ma. Welcome, ma. Okay. Um, can you explain? Can you explain tearing for me very well? Explain what? Tearing, tearing. As in the tear they used to give them some women. Oh, you mean the tear they get when they deliver? Hello. There are some people. There are some people. They said, um, like, if they want to give birth and they cannot give birth, they give them a kind of tear. Okay, that is the episiotomy that I mentioned. Okay. It is not tear. Okay. So tear. Okay. Why we give episiotomy? If the uh, opening, that is the vagina, is not um, wide enough to allow the baby to come out freely. That is why we give the cut. And if we don't give the cut, the head of the baby will force itself out and it will create an ugly cut. So the cut we are giving is a straight cut that can be, that will suture and it will be as if nothing ever happened to that place. Why there are some cuts, we call that one Laceration. So you understand that one is yes. the, the self tear that the, the, the that occur in that place as a result of the force of the head from the head of the baby. Yeah. So to prevent that, we give the cut. If you allow, okay. allow it to tear on its own, it will give an ugly tear that might be mm. difficult to suture. And not only that. It, there can be, it, it can even result to injury to the head of the baby. So that is why we, we normally give the cut. Okay, and if it, is, it will ease the delivery and then it will, the, the, the cut will heal better than when the, 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 the place is torn by itself. Because when it is torn on its own, you don't know the exact place. It can even, it can, you can have a self tear to the extent that it will tear the rectum. But if it is a guided cut, 
Such will not happen. Okay, ma. Thank you, ma. You're welcome. I saw something like a second uh, pregnancy lasting 40 weeks. I, I did not get it before the thing uh, went off the screen. Could you please explain? Yes, Mike. And the question says that um, it says, please, Mike, is a second pregnancy likely to last you 40 weeks? Well, it depends. It depends on individual pregnancy. No one can, nobody can say, okay, a pregnancy is going to last a so, so, so amount. But the normal uh, duration of pregnancy is 40 weeks. Have I answered the question? Hello? 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 I think we can hear. Yeah, she said yes. She said yes. We can move on. Okay. Thank you. Any other person? Hello, ma. Good afternoon, ma. Good afternoon, ma. Thank you for the lecture. Yes, ma. I would like to ask: before the episiotomy is done, is there any injection that is given to like reduce the pain, or it is just done straight away? It is not just done straight away. An injection is usually given at that site before it is given. That is if there is time for it. But if there is no time, at the peak of contraction, when the head is pushing so hard at the peak of the, uh, uh, on the uh, vaginal wall, at the peak of contraction, when it is given, you will not know because you are contracting at that moment. So you won't have, you will, you will not feel the pain from the cut. It is the contraction that you'll be feeling. But usually we give an injection to that site. Have I answered you? Yes, ma, you have, thank you, ma. You're welcome. Hello, house, any other question? Hello. We are fine, ma. We are good. Thank you so much. Okay. In the absence of uh, any question, shall we call it a day? Thank you for attending the class. I am very grateful. Hope to see you next time. And I hope. Uh, you all stay safe at home. And then I wish you safe delivery. Thank you, ma. You're welcome. Bye. Bye. Thank Bye. you, ma. Bye. Bye. Thank you, ma. Bye. Bye. Bye.